Hello and welcome to Stories from India, a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I am your host Narad Muni and I am a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I am a travelling musician and a storyteller. So the way I'm doing my job is by podcast. In this episode, we are continuing the Ramayan with Ram and Lakshman investigating how Sita had disappeared when they returned from their hunt of the golden deer. If you haven't heard previous Ramayan episodes, it's a good idea to check them out. But if not, here's a summary. Ram who was the crown prince of Ayodhya, had to give up his title to his brother Bharat. Because Bharat's mom, Kaikei, forced King Dasharath to crown her own son the next king and to send Ram away for 14 years. But Ram did not go into exile by himself. His wife, Sita, and his brother, Lakshman, went with him. Bharat would have seriously objected to this arrangement, but he was away on vacation when this happened, and he didn't know his mother's plans. He located Ram in exile and tried to bring him back after Dasharat passed away, but Ram refused. He had made a promise and he meant to keep it. So Ram, Lakshman and Sita continued their exile while Bharat returned to Ayodhya as the temporary king. In the Dandak forest, which was densely populated with all kinds of monsters, Ram, Lakshman and Sita still managed to lead a decent domestic life. All that changed when they encountered Shurpanakha, followed by her brothers Khar and Dushan. Shurpanaka was mutilated and Khar and Dushan were killed by the Ayodhya brothers. That was not the end, however, because that's when Ravan got involved. Ravan was Shurpanaka's brother and the king of Lanka and the mega villain in this epic. Ravan took swift revenge on Ram and Lakshman by abducting Sita. The way he did it was to have his henchmen serve as a distraction in the form of a golden deer. At Sita's insistence, first Ram and later Lakshman chased the deer for miles, leaving her unprotected at home. Well, not quite unprotected. Lakshman drew a kind of a protection ring around the hut and cautioned Sita not to step outside of it. But when the brothers returned, Sita was nowhere in sight. And that's where we'll continue the story. Ram and Lakshman stood outside the hut. They saw no signs of Sita. All that remained were a few broken pots and those pots were outside the Lakshman Rekha. The brothers lost no time in trying to figure out what had happened here. Did the Lakshman Rekha work at all? wondered Ram. It did, there's no doubt. Look, said Lakshman, pointing at a few cockroaches lying dead on the chalk line. Let's examine the scene carefully said Ram. There must be some clues. And that investigation got some quick results. I found an earring, replied Lakshman. Is there an ear attached to it? It could be Shurpanakha's, you know, reminded Ram. Doesn't look like it, said Lakshman. This has the trademark of an Ayodhya jeweler. 
there's also a bit of hair here, which is just the shade of black that Sita's. Shurpadakha's was a different color. And on the inside of the hut, there are some grains of rice spilled. It's as if Sita had fetched rice for someone, said Ram. She might have done that if a rishi visited and asked her for rice, continued Lakshman. If it was a rishi, why did he stay outside the Lakshman Rekha? asked Ram, looking down at the footsteps which were only visible right outside the chalk line. Maybe he didn't know that I put in an exception clause for rishis, replied Lakshman. I am seeing something very weird here, added Ram, looking at some items he found scattered on the ground. I am seeing multiple pairs of sunglasses and a few boxes of mint. It's as if there were many people here, but there's only a single pair of footprints. Maybe it was a door-to-door sunglass salesman wondered Lakshman. Or maybe it was one guy with many heads. One guy with many heads? I never heard of such a thing, said Ram. But let's follow the footprints. And so they did. The footprints led them to the tracks of a chariot. And that's where it got even more weird. Because the chariot tracks just disappeared after a while. The brothers started walking in the direction in which the chariot appeared to have gone. Maybe the rishi had a flying chariot or an air taxi, wondered Lakshman. But Ram did not respond. He had spotted something in the distance and began rushing towards it. It was the shattered remains of a chariot and a couple of dead horses. And amongst the remains, there was a large shape, an inhuman shape making inhuman noises. Ram and Lakshman rushed forward. Lakshman drew his arrow quickly. That's the monster that ate Sita. I bet it's lying there taking a nap. But Ram stopped him. That's not a monster. That's Jatayu. They rushed to the bird, who had been a good neighbor to them. The inhuman noises the bird made were because he was very badly injured. With his dying breath, he related the story. It was Ravan, he began. Sorry, who? asked Lakshman. Ravan, Shurpanakha and Khar and Dushan's brother. He's the mega villain in this epic, replied Jatayu. How about you start at the beginning? asked Lakshman. And Jatayu began. In the beginning... There was nothing in the universe. All matter and antimatter were concentrated together in the primordial atom. Then, in a big bang. Not that far back, interrupted Lakshman. Speed up the timeline a bit. Okay, said Jatayu, and began again. In episode one, Unicorn Fish. Mankind began with Manu. How about we start with today? asked Ram. Sure, why didn't you just say so earlier? asked Jatayu. So today, I was sitting in my tree, just minding my own business, eating my lunch, when I saw this chariot zooming past. Naturally, I was curious. I have never seen a chariot flying before. So I flew closer. 
and to my surprise there was sita inside it with this guy who looked like the letter t weirdest guy ever he had 10 heads all in a row he's the guy he's the one who abducted her exclaimed ram yeah chitai said sita was trying to fight him but the guy was too strong for her i jumped into the fight i attacked the horses my plan was to catch sita when they both fell but ravan was too strong he sliced off my wings i still managed to destroy his chariot but i couldn't stop him from carrying off sita where did he take her asked ram quickly he flew off south replied chatayu that's all i could see if i had to guess i would say he's going back to lanka and that was the last thing chatayu ever said we have to go to lanka right away ravan has made a terrible mistake said ram we should gather some intelligence on him said lakshman if he can fly without a flying chariot that villain must have a bunch of other superpowers too lakshman cautioned either way let's just head south now there's no sense in hanging around here ram said first they cremated chatayu and then began their long walk but within just a few feet they had another surprise waiting for them ram and lakshman were walking on a section of the forest where the ground seemed very unusual it seemed skin colored and the moment they stepped on it the ground rose up and grabbed them they were in the clutches of two enormous giant hands neither brother could move a muscle as the hands were rushing through the forest at breakneck speed towards their owner and that owner was kaband kaband had neither a neck nor a head instead he had one eye and a mouth in his torso and his arms were miles long he was an unusual rakshas indeed although for a rakshas what was not unusual was the intent conveyed by his single evil eye and his nasty sharp teeth it was dinner time for kaband and the ayodhya brothers were on the menu hey monster i'm just wondering how do you look over your shoulder lakshman asked the rakshas do you have to turn around every time eh what asked kaband not understanding never mind i was just distracting you with a question while my brother reached for his sword said lakshman patiently sword asked kaband and swiftly turned his eye in ram's direction but it was too late ram had managed to reach the weapon it flashed and soon kaband howled from the pain of his arm being sliced off lakshman took advantage of this and quickly grabbed his own sword another flash and kaband reeled and fell backwards he no longer had any arms and it sounds like his entire life was concentrated in his arms because kaband passed away soon after his last words right before that were a request to the ayodhya brothers ram lakshman please cremate me and i'll help you 
So Ram and Lakshman did just that. Even though Lakshman was a little reluctant initially. But it turned out to be a good idea because from the funeral pyre rose a Gandharv. A Gandharv is a celestial musician. This one introduced himself as Vishwavasu and explained how he had become Kaband. I was perfectly happy in heaven, said Vishwavasu. And then it all turned south once Brahma got involved. Brahma? You mean Narad Muni's dad and the creator of the universe? asked Lakshman. Yes, thank you for that exposition, replied Vishwavasu. Now may I continue with my story? Lakshman nodded. And the Gandharv continued. So, Brahma gave me immortality. That's Brahma for you, said Lakshman. Narads often told me he goes about scattering all kinds of wishes everywhere. Almost every one of them backfires. Vishwavasu glared at Lakshman for the interruption and continued. So, I thought I would rule heaven. And why not? Brahma had made me immortal. Well, you didn't look very immortal there with your arms sliced off, pointed out Lakshman. I'm getting to that part, replied the Gandharv. So Indra caught me and punished me. He transformed me into a Rakshas, destined to live on earth until Ram and Lakshman, princes of Ayodhya, came along and severed my arms. So you see, you both have really rescued me from my horrid life. I owe you guys one. Tell me, how can I help you? Name it, anything. Well, that's easy. Bring back Sita, said Lakshman quickly. Ah... About that, it's not that easy. You see, Ravan is more powerful than anyone. I can't snatch her back. But tell you what, I'll do the next best thing. I can tell you who can help you. Who? asked Ram at once. Sugriv, said Vishwavasu. Sugriv's the man for the job. Or rather, the king the rightful king of the Vanars. And where can we find Sugriv? asked Ram. At Rishyamukha Hill. You have to hike up the hill. If you do, your dreams will come true. My dreams have been nightmares lately. I am not looking to have them all come true. But where on the hill will we find Sugriv? asked Ram. In a cave. You can't miss it once you're near the top. And Ram, I don't want you to worry. Narad has told me the future. I know you'll get Sita back. And with that, Ram and Lakshman set off in the direction that Vishwavasu had indicated. It was a long walk, but they would get there. How was Sita, meanwhile? If you're wondering, she was in Lanka, having arrived there by Ravan Airways. She had for the tenth time just refused Ravan's proposal of marriage. And for the tenth time, Ravan was angry and frustrated with her. He hadn't harmed her yet, but he seemed awfully close to doing so. Was Vishwavasu right? Would Ram and Lakshman make it in time? We'll have to wait and see in future episodes. That's all for this week. A few notes. There are many other stories behind Kaban's curse. In some cases, it was a Rishi who cursed him. In a subset of those, it was Durvas 
the single most petty and mean rishi of all time. We have encountered Durvas in many other episodes before. The reason for cursing him doesn't really matter. Knowing Durvas, it was probably because he thought Kaban looked at him in the wrong way. Additionally, in some versions of the Ramayana, Kaban initially did not have a mouth at all. In those versions, he begged Indra to make it possible for him to eat food. And Indra granted his request by giving him a mouth in the middle of his belly. Although it's very unclear how Kabandh made that request in the first place, seeing as he didn't have a mouth to speak with. Maybe Indra could understand sign language. Do check out the links in the show notes for other Ramayana episodes. In the next episode, we'll do another folktale. This one is a Kashmiri folktale that was requested by one of you listeners. It's about a girl who was asked to do some grocery shopping. First item on the shopping list was milk. Does that sound boring? It shouldn't be, because the milk had to be from a tigress. And the story also has several other kinds of magical objects that would have made world conquest as easy as a snap of the fingers. If you have comments or suggestions, or if there are particular stories that you would like to hear, please do let me know by leaving a comment or a review on the site, sfipodcast.com, or tweet at sfipodcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. Thanks to all of you listeners for your continued support and your feedback. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. I'll see you next time.